All right, so how to get your prayers answered. And if you didn't watch a previous video, I'm just going to quickly recap it because I went through five things, five this way, five things uh, that you need to consider to have answered prayers. Uh, the first thing they got to understand is that God has no favorites. Something that he's done for one, he'll do for all. Second thing is that you need to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. There is an order and there is a system. God is very specific in the details. Number three is you need to know God's will. Faith begins where the will of God is made known. God does not go and he will not go outside the parameters of his will. And there's 66 books of what God's will is from him to mankind. Uh, number four is that God's will must be prayed on the earth. So find scriptures. Stand on it. Believe that it will happen in your life. And the fifth thing that I'm going to mention on how to have success in your prayer life, I'm going to mention in this video. So let's get it. Start tonight that say I live in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm not going to do what they tell me to do. I'm going to do what you've told me to do. I'm going to be holy and live for you. Brother, when you do that, God will bless you. He'll break every yoke. He'll break every sin. And you're going to make it in Jesus' name. I see the power of God hidden in the high schools, in the primary schools, on the university campuses, in the places of business, in the places of government. We see the whole region shake. All right, so this is this is the one thing that I see a lot of people fail at. People that's been in church for 50 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, 5 years. I've seen many people fail at this one thing. You know, it's um I I've seen a lot of new believers have this at the very beginning and then it ends up fizzling out later on in the years. Why? The thing that you need to have is an expectation that you're going to have exactly what you prayed for. You need to have an expectation. Uh, it just pop into my spirit. Mark chapter 11, uh, verse 22. And the Bible says that Jesus said to his disciples to have faith in God. And verse 23, he said, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, uh, be lifted and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. And I tell you, you can pray for anything. You know what anything means? Anything. You could pray for anything. And obviously that is confined to what's in scripture. You can't pray that God murders somebody. <laughs> you can't pray that the person that cut you off, their, their car blows up in front of you. It needs to be in context of scripture. And if you pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it shall be yours. Not when you see it coming, but you need to believe that you've received it. You know, when you're ordering an, uh, a package from Amazon, you don't check on it every single day. Okay, is this still coming? Is this still coming? You don't call the store. Hey, is this still coming? Is this coming? After the first time that you've ordered something from Amazon, you order something online, there's an expectation that, hey, my package is directly on the way. That's how it is in your prayer life. That expectation that after you've, you've said the prayer, not when you received it, not when you start seeing things in motion, that after you've prayed the prayer, there's a belief in your heart that it's coming on to you. And that's you're going to have consistently answered prayers it's that expectation the bible tells us in the book of proverbs that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off so you need to have an expectation that your prayers are going to get answered every single time that you pray and this is where i see people fail they have great expectations in the beginning because oftentimes people come from nothing they don't see god's hand moving in their life whatsoever then they start going to church. Then religion settles in. And then it kind of like fizzles out. Do not get comfortable or familiar with your God. Keep expecting bigger things. Keep expecting greater things. Keep having a hunger and a passion to see his hand move in your life. Have an expectation that he, that he is going to do the impossible in your life. That he, he will take you higher. He will expand your territory. He will put you in front of people that you have no business being in front of. That is his nature. Why? One of your covenant promises in Deuteronomy 20.10 says that nations will recognize that you are a people claimed by God and they will stand in awe of you. 
You're supposed to be envied by the world. The world is supposed to recognize that God's hand is on your life. So have an expectation from today that whenever you pray, whatever you ask for, it will be given to you. And having an expectation is it, it's not it, it's 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 knowing that it's going to come to pass, and that's exactly what the, the what the uh, the definition of faith is. Though. This is um, this is what the Bible says. What faith is in Hebrews eleven one, and I like how it says in the Amplified. It says now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things that we hope for, being the proof of things that we do not see, and the conviction of the reality. Faith perceiving as fact what is not yet revealed to the senses. So it's knowing the outcome before it happens. And that's the kind of confidence that you're supposed to have when you pray to the Father. So, and and, and do not let your circumstance be blinded, uh, blind you from seeing the reality that's in God's Word. Don't let now your human intellect, your knowledge, stop you from attaining what is yours and that's the this is the one thing that i see a lot of people fail at is they fail at having that genuine expectation for god to move in their life let me read something to you and this is taken from uh, luke chapter uh luke chapter five start from verse 12 it says, In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. And when the man saw Jesus, he bowed his face to the ground, begging him to be healed. And Lord, he said, If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. So you got, the first thing you got to understand is this man had, it, the Bible says, an advanced case of leprosy. And leprosy is a skin-eating disease, contagious on contact. If somebody were to have leprosy in Jesus' day, the, the societal norm was for this person to be thrown out of society. And if they were to enter in, they were to be stoned to death. And this was in the law of Moses. So Jesus had every single right to say, hey, apostles, guys, come here. You see this leper? He's, he, he's coming too close to us. Stone him to death. He had all the legal rights to do that. But why didn't he? Jesus recognized the faith. See, the leper heard that this person named Jesus was a healer. Based from the testimonies from, from the other people in the village. That if I go to this one individual, he can make me whole. So it doesn't matter about the situation that I'm in. It doesn't matter what I physically see in my body. I know if I go directly to him and, and he it will touch me and give me the desires of my heart. But here's the kicker. He says in, in, uh, in the same verse, verse 12, if you are willing, if, if is the language of doubt, if is the language of unbelief, if you are willing. And that's how a lot of people are. They hear that Jesus is a healer. They hear that Jesus is a provider. They heal that. Uh, they hear that Jesus is the burden bearer. They hear that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. They hear that he is this miracle worker that's able to do extraordinary things in ordinary individuals. But they don't know and they don't have the expectation that he will do it for them. The first point that I made was in this entire prayer series was God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he, is, he will do for all. So have that expectation. Know that yes, he is willing. What he's saying, Jesus is saying, verse 13. So Jesus reached out and touched him and said, I am willing. I am willing. Jesus is willing to heal you. Jesus is willing to touch and restore your family. Jesus is willing to repair your broken marriage. Jesus is willing to touch your body. But you need to go to him in faith with an expectation that he will do exactly what he said. And then Jesus said, be healed. And immediately the leprosy disappeared. That's faith. And that's expectation. Going out of your comfort zone, seeking the uh, the way maker, throwing yourself at at his feet, and having an expectation that when you go to him, he will not reject you. He will not throw you on the side. And that word 
instantly, or in the King James, immediately, is used 55 times in the New Testament, most of which is in the miracle ministry of Jesus. And immediately the leper was cleansed. And immediately the the blind could see. Immediately the mute can speak. Immediately the deaf ears came open. Immediately all oh, these Christians, they, they, they want a microwave gospel. Well, Jesus didn't have a problem with it. Immediately. You know, God made the world in six days. He doesn't need six minutes to sort out your mess. If you're making any notes, when your faith says yes, God will never say no. Remember that. Tattoo it. Do it, <laughs> do whatever you got to do to get that in your spirit. When your faith says yes, God will never say no. Immediately. Where else could we see this? In Mark chapter 5. And this is like the, the, the healing chapter of, of of the entire bible because it's just miracle after miracle but there's one of these miracles that, that i really want to uh get into your spirit about having an expectation and we'll start from uh verse 25 of, of uh, mark chapter 5 it says a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with consistent bleeding she suffered a great deal from many doctors and over the years she spent everything she had to pay them but she didn't get any better in fact she gotten worse she heard about jesus so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe for she thought to herself if i can just touch his robe i will be healed that's expectation if you know on anything about the historical context of this this woman if you're if, if you had your period like what this woman had you were to be far away from society, far away from the men, because you were considered unclean. That was something punishable by death. All right, no, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. Uh, <laughs> my battery actually died. So that's the outfit change. So I hope you don't mind it. But anyways, just like what I was saying from Mark chapter 5, the thing with the, the, the woman with the issue of blood, exactly how the leper man was. It was if... I can touch the faith. There was an expectation that as soon as I get close to this man, as soon as I touch this man, he's going to do what I desire for him. And this is what's going to set you apart. This is how you're going to have your prayers answered every single time. Is if you have that expectation. So don't lose that expectation. And believe that God's going to do exactly what you're asking him for. He's not going to throw you away. He's, he's not a jerk. Expect your miracle. Because when your faith says yes, God will never say no. And with that being said, I want to send you off with a quick prayer. Because I believe faith has arisen on the inside of you. And I know that God's going to touch you there where you're at. I believe that long, outstanding prayers are going to become answered starting from today. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for my friend. I, I, I believe you and I believe your word. And God, today we have an expectation that you are going to touch our lives in a way that we could not even imagine. Father, we've come to you with prayer requests. God, you know the desires of our heart. You know what my friend is believing for specifically. God, it may be healing in their body. It may be repairing of a relationship. It may be restoring family. Father, I thank you that we can come to you in faith, just like the, the woman with the issue of blood and just like the leper. And you will answer our request. Father, reveal yourself to them. And let them receive what, what they've been desiring. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, God bless. Stay tuned. I'm going to be dropping a few more videos next week. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you want to partner with us, believe me, we got some amazing things coming on in the oncoming year. Definitely do so. Everything's down in the description. All right. God bless.